Good evening, everyone. Tonight's special meeting is an opportunity for council to discuss and select firms uh, for the town manager to lead the town manager search. Uh, this uh, was a discussion that we had. Each of the three firms that were selected to present presented to us last Thursday, and uh, council used the days in between to go back and review their notes as well as the firm's proposals. And we're here tonight to discuss those and to make a final selection. So with that, um, we will start. John, let's just lay out the discussion, the thoughts. Sure. I, from my perspective only, uh, we had three excellent proposals. There are some differences which are more than nuances between and among them, including cost, method, et cetera, but um, they're, they're really um, firms that appear to be at the top of the market, firms that are extremely competitive, firms that will serve our needs. So the the project tonight is to pick the firm that fits our needs best, that we can identify as delivering what we need, a quality candidate in a reasonable point of time at a reasonable cost uh, to us. And hopefully that will be the beginning of literally a new era in terms of our management team. So that's uh, the context in which we're meeting. Um, I will note that uh, in scoring the written proposals, it's pretty clear where people were originally. Uh, and I suppose the question is, did the presentations change anything in that order? And uh, my scores were very close, you know, within several points on the top three. So they were in a different order, but they were the top three that I had identified. So I'm very comfortable with this discussion. Terry? Um, yes, we're not getting into deliberations at this point. We're just, uh, just general comments, just general comments. Um, the presentations did not change, um, my initial grading. Uh, in fact, they reinforced my initial grading. Um, however, um, one of the three search firms was not in my top three, and um, they did nothing to better my opinion in their presentation. Bill? Uh, I've said ever since we've heard from the search firms that Mickey Mantle, Willie Mace, or Hank Aaron make a pick, you can't go wrong. Uh, I think we had three good firms, made three good presentations. Uh, I went in thinking that I preferred one firm, and I came out still in favor of that one firm. Uh, it was just good presentations. Bob? So, um, thank you. So to echo some of those comments, I think we had um, three uh, very fine firms giving us presentations from three very different perspectives. So um, we had three flavors of ice cream. We had chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. So we had uh, one that is a, uh, a professional national business uh, with <laughs> thousands of employees nation, nationwide, which I think could, is something that's beneficial. We had the other extreme, which is an independent contractor, a um, solo practitioner who uses independent contractors on an as-needed basis. And then we had the mid, a second one, that was or a third one, that was a combination of both. So they had some employees. So three very different flavors. Um, I imagine all three would do a, a fine job with a, a town manager in a town, whether or not it's a town manager in Oak Island is to be discussed. Thank you. 
Mark? Um, I'll just quickly say that the, the presentations and then the question and response uh, session following the presentations um, did not change the order of my uh, scoring. So my, my priority list is, was unchanged. Thank you. Do you want to start with a motion? Well, I'd or like to. Do you to want to just take a poll and see where people are? Whatever the pleasure of, of the chair is. Why don't we do a poll and see where everyone is? Okay. Go ahead, John. Um, uh, by a narrow margin, but a margin nonetheless, I'm supporting um, the Slavin proposal. Um, I can go through the rationale, but I, I don't want to take up time if we're just polling. So I'll say that's my vote. That was my vote going in and remains unchanged. Overwhelmingly, I'm with Baker Tilly. I have reasons for them, and I have reasons um, not for Slavin which I'm happy to elaborate on when we get there. Bill? Uh, my vote would be for Slavin. Bob? Uh, my overwhelming vote would be for Baker Tilly. And Mark? Slavin. Is there a motion on the table? Make a motion that we select Slavin to perform the search for the Oak Island town manager. I'll second. Second. So we have 20 minutes of discussion. Uh, if you need that much, anyone want to support why they're selecting <coughs> Slavin or Baker Tilly? I'd be, ha I'd be happy to do that. Um, I, I think the, the owner of the firm, the principal, is fully committed. He would be the lead on the project, as he indicated, and he is uh, a strong um, leader with vast experience. He, he is, uh, I would say, sagacious. Uh, he's got a proven track record. Uh, I like the centerpiece of his um, process in, in, in my point of view and, and my experience. Uh, an on-site observation is the traditional gold standard for a candidate, uh, and that's what he would perform. I think his process is leaner, doesn't have as many steps, as many tests, as many procedures, and therefore we, we would have the ability, hopefully, to expedite the search to get under 120 days, perhaps even under 90. Uh, much of it would be contingent on how, how quickly we respond to his request to develop the profile. Uh, all three firms have excellent placement records. His is uh, right there with the best of them. Uh, he has the best guarantee, which is equal by one other firm of two years uh, for the viability of the placement. Uh, he has, from my point of view, the best follow-on, two meetings within the first year with the candidate. Uh, he is the most economic firm at 24.5 versus 29 plus versus 26 plus, he did commit to a hard cap of 24.5. Um, so for, for the above reasons, um, I liked his written proposal. Um, I liked him. Uh, I got a sense of sincerity and commitment from him. I think he will deliver for us. Uh, and I think that we need to, to accelerate the timelines, not extend them. Uh, he seemed... Uh, to signal that, that he would be comfortable with that as long as we provided him with the initial launch point. So um, I'll stop there. And Thank you. Terry or Bob, do you want to speak for Dr. Uh, Tilly? I'm, I'm prepared to speak. Um, I heard things quite differently than my colleague, Mr. Bach. Um, so perhaps it was just the way we interpreted what each of us heard. First thing I would say is that um, I hope that 120 days versus 90 days is not the determining, determining factor because, and if I'm wrong, I will acknowledge that I was wrong. But based on the climate 
that we currently have, the number of towns in North Carolina that are looking for town managers, I think it could take us significantly several, several months to find the person that Oak Island is looking for, unless we're willing to just take whoever <coughs> walks through the doors. So I didn't let the timeline of 90 days versus 120 days uh, sway me. They all seem to indicate that they would uh, advertise for 30 days. I think that's the important part. I also read Slavin's expenses differently because they gave us a hard cap of $24,520 but when I read the first paragraph about expenses, it says the client pays direct costs for all necessary consultant traveling. And they also told us that they intend to do on-site interviews. So they intend to go where the candidates are and interview them. If I'm reading this correctly, that could be another fifteen dollars to $20,000 expense added on to their $24,520. That's a, that's a question I have. Um, it concerns me that they are a small company and that they uh, contract people out. I was concerned that the two and a half pages of experience <coughs> they gave us did only had four uh, manager, not even four, three manager selections that they have done since 2021. I'm like, what have you been doing since 2021? We're not, seeing, we're not seeing the fruits of your labor. On the other hand, Baker Tilly provided us two or three pages that actually started in 2021 and come currently. So they certainly have uh, placed more candidates. Um, he admitted that they didn't have much coastal experience. He named off a few, few places but apparently they weren't important enough to put into his proposal because we don't see them uh, in his proposal. On his warranty, again, I interpreted that differently. Gives us a two-year warranty before they will come back and solicit potentially the town manager that they placed with us. According to what I read by Baker Tilly, they never come back and solicit a candidate they've placed with you. So I don't want to hire somebody, and two years later, Slavin comes back and says, oh, here, we got another job offer for you. So I just, uh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't buy into that. Those were, those were the reasons that I didn't find favor with Slavin, and um, I'll let my colleague, Mr. Chulo, talk about Baker Tilly when we get there. Bill or Mark? Uh, what I liked about Slavin was their follow-up, their on-site interviews, and when they said they wanted the town council to stay in charge of the process, that rang loud with me. They made it clear they don't want to be bogged down with surveys and questionnaires and one more survey and one more questionnaire that they wanted to get on with finding a, a town manager. Uh, the surveys, the questionnaires, the analytics, that ends up taking several months, which I think would be uncalled for. Lastly, when asked about beach towns and coastal towns, I think Mr. Slavin named many um, and uh, satisfied my curiosity on the coastal towns. So, uh, I feel good about that, that vote. Um. So I made some notes, and not I don't want to reiterate anything that, that Terry talked about. So five years ago, all three of these firms could have been a good solution for us, for a town manager search firm. But with our explosive growth and development in the past six years, I believe we have outgrown two of these firms, Slavin and Development Associates. With 10,000-plus year-round residents, 160 full-time employees, a $60 million budget, we need a search firm with a national presence a national network and national credibility so we can find a senior executive as our next town manager and Baker Tilly can bring this to us. In 2023, I founded my own consulting firm in the wealth management space. <clears throat> I was a one-man show. I knew my limitations and what I did best. If a prospective client asked me to take on an engagement which was larger than I thought I could do, 
I would refer the engagement to another consulting firm. I would not bring in other independent contractors from across the country to take on this engagement with me. I know my limitations. I'm a bit concerned about the approach that Slavin takes to assemble a team and support for each and every engagement, oftentimes different individuals. He has no employees, just 1099 contractors. I see this lack of continuity as a disadvantage. I believe dedicated employee support, including project lead from the entire search firm is paramount. I suspect online candidate meetings will be very awkward for the senior level executive we're seeking. And I expect some very qualified candidates will absolutely not want to have those meetings. I'm most impressed with Ann Lewis and Baker Tilly. She has the experience as a project lead, the background presence in national network that was, we're seeking for senior executive as next town manager. Having lived in Northern Virginia for 30 years, I'm very familiar with Baker Tilly and the reputation they enjoy on a national basis. Though I do not know Ms. Lewis, I've never worked with her directly. For the search for a new town manager, we need the best firm we can get. Mayor Bill and Terry have invested many hours in this process and have turned over many stones. In my opinion, Baker Tilly is the best of the best, with their fee structure being number two of the three presented. And regardless of who is chosen tonight, town council will drive this process. We will not let this, the recruiting firm drive the process. You're looking at the folks right here at the dais that are gonna drive this process. Thank you. Mark. I really don't have anything to add other than what John and Bill have already said. Um, the, I'll add one thing to their list. Um, I thought it was really um, uh, interesting that they also do um, ongoing site visits after the candidate is employed, a six month and a one year. So I thought that was um, interesting that they come back and check on the candidate um, here in, in the position at two different uh, time intervals. So. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from council? I, I have a question <clears throat> for my colleagues, uh, Mr. Martin and Mr. Bach, because you both mentioned it. I'm curious what you view the benefit to be to have Slavin come back up to two years later. We will have hired a town manager. We will be under contract with a town manager. What is a firm going to provide us that we haven't already learned or that we haven't already discovered either we made a mistake or I just I don't see the I don't see the benefit of coming back two years later I'm curious what you all see well uh, if I may um respectfully what I heard um Slavin say was the on-site would be restricted to the top three candidates, the finalists, et cetera. They were selected by town council. Uh, and that is within his cost structure, as I heard it. Um, I also heard him in response to one of the other concerns uh, when we said, we are extremely uh, hopeful we'll find someone who has um, coastal experience. He read off half of Florida as his experience. So he clearly has done work in coastal communities. I think the advantage to the immediate question, the, the firm is committed to the success of the candidate, candidate selected in our environment and is willing to come back and confirm that success and work with that client, not just once, but twice in the first year. All three of the firms, to their credit, said, if you choose counsel, we will help you conduct the final interview, we'll suggest questions, we'll, we'll sit down with the candidate and work towards a set of expectations. We'll, if you choose, we'll take your criteria for success and your prioritization of issues and work with the candidate. That's all well and good. I think everyone's gonna do that. What was distinctive is that Slavin was willing to come back twice I would presume his follow-up would concern those items that we have presented to him and to the candidate that were shared mutually. And, and I think that's value added. Um, and I think it, it will help, you know, entering a new position. And as Bob said, 
in an environment which is dynamic, which is changing, um, we want to provide as much support and independent um, eyes on the candidate as we can. So, uh, because we evaluate the candidate and we hire or fire the candidate, that's a different level of support. And I would see it as non-threatening, but I would see it as supportive. No, I, I would agree with Council Member Bach and his, and his comments. That those, that's the exact same logic that I'm using in regards to the return visits at six months and one year. Uh, I'm, so I'm not as concerned about the visits after the fact. You know, it's, it's window dressing to me. What I'm extremely concerned about is the on-site visits during the recruiting process. So this gentleman with an, another independent contractor or two is going to shadow a prospective candidate for a half day in their town hall. And he is going to say, I'm a management consultant or a town, whatever he, wording he used. I just watched it again this morning for the second time. Um, and how uncomfortable it is going to be for that executive. And I really think, um, having been a corporate executive, I think a lot of potential executive managers at that level are just gonna walk away saying, I'm not interested in that. I do not want anybody coming in here and potentially undermining my relationship. I haven't told anybody I'm leaving. And all of a sudden I've got this person who's shouting me for half day. It's gonna be awkward. And I think we could potentially lose really qualified candidates by going through that process. I agree. I think it could cost us candidates. Well, it will certainly winnow the field. I'll, I'll say this. In my 25-year career as a school executive, if you want to consider a superintendent a school executive, that process uh, was applied to my candidacy twice. So, yes, you're right. Some candidates are going to say, no, I don't want anybody to come in here. I don't want anybody to know anybody make phone calls, here's my list, they give you a list of people and they're narrowing who you call. Uh, I've been in a situation where they not only shouted, they brought a team in. They polled students, they polled teachers at random and interviewed them. So unless you're really committed to getting that job, yeah, you're right, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable and you're probably not gonna do it. But I want someone who's willing to go through that process to get to us because they value Oak Island that much. And yeah, you do learn a lot about the person, about uh, does he inform, does he prep, or does he say, here's my environment, here's how I interact with people. And yeah, I, I, I think you get a certain kind of candidate out of that process. I've been there, and I know exactly what it feels like and what it, you know, what, how it proceeds. I, I trust that eyes on that that contact, and you know, from the time I walk in the door and I talk to the janitor, the time I do a teacher's mm -hmm. evaluation, you know, and uh, you've got to get waivers and all all of those things. But on the ground, in the flesh, that, from my experience, is extremely powerful. And if somebody's uncomfortable, fine, I don't want them. I want the best person, and that's one way I think that you <coughs> establish it. But. We can, we can disagree about it. You know, I mean, not to belabor the point, I mean, nobody's changing their mind here, but um, it's not uncomfortable. It goes, to me, it goes way past being uncomfortable, where qualified executive town managers are just not going to participate because they do not want somebody coming into their office and interact, watching their interactions and potentially interacting with their team and undermining their relationship with their employer. I mean, that, to me, is a red flag and should Slavin be picked, um, that's a discussion I would like to have if we decide to move forward and allow him to take that process and move forward on that, or if we ask him to change that process. And going under the guise of being there for a different reason, saying I'm here as a management consultant. Um, what I didn't hear him say was that he was gonna interview people individually at that place. He just wanted to see how the potential can the candidate interacted with employees and what kind of response employees gave when they saw the town manager. If we're talking about, I mean, we've talked many times about the confidentiality and the reason for confidentiality was to protect candidates who might be qualified. And now it sounds like we're willing to throw that out the door and say, 
it's not going to be confidential. Everybody's going to know where, you know, you're looking for another job. So I don't think it's going to help us. Anything else, Council? So there's a motion on the floor and a second to uh, contract with Slavin. All in favor? Opposed? Three, two, Lisa. Any other comments? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, from my colleague, Terry, did we get a copy of the proposed contract? I sent it to Lisa and asked for it to be sent out to council. Um, yes, I, I will send that out. Um, wasn't on today's agenda though, so. Okay, so here's my, I, Thank you, because I don't have a copy of it. Um, is it, and you mentioned that you talked to Brian about it, right? Brian's reviewed it. Brian's reviewed it. Is the contract going to be executed by the current manager or by the current assistant manager? Um, I haven't read it, so I don't know if you've already settled that question. Yeah. What do you mean by executed, John? Um, well, I'd like... I think I would like both David and Catherine, certainly Catherine, to review it because she's going to inherit the person. Right. Right? So when I say execute, that she's seen it and she's approved it. And Catherine will have to pre-audit it as the finance director the, anyway. Um, okay. So, but the mayor can sign Well, I think we should be clear the assistant manager yeah. is going to be in charge at that point and she should be responsible. The, the, uh, what Brian reviewed and did not change was that uh, the mayor would sign the contract he would um, review, sign off reviewed as to form, and that Catherine would sign off uh, certific certification of contract funds availability. Okay, I'm satisfied. I just want to make sure that we didn't have a, a lapse there and fell into the cracks. That's fine. Um, that concludes our business for tonight. And um, your motion to adjourn whenever you're ready. We've got uh, time uh, slots to sign up for the prep for next week's meeting. Lisa has them for you, Mark, oh. if you want to. Yeah, we'll talk after the meeting. And um, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, everyone.